Hey there, LEGO fans. Welcome back. Alex here. In this video, we are going to be going over the new five LEGO designs that are finalists in the latest BrickLink Designer program. Uh, this is a series two that we're going to be taking a look at. So what I'm going to do here is uh, share my screen of the BrickLink website and take a look at these things and see what we're in store for. And I definitely want to see uh, what you guys think about these here as well. So already we are on the series two finalists as kind of a, uh, a brief uh, history here series one um, let's take a look at these finalists here I won't spend a lot of time here but these are the, the finalists for series one uh, that are still in process their crowdfunding won't start for these guys uh, let's see not until um, summer or fall of next year wow that is a oh no, no I'm sorry February crowdfunding will be February of 2024 so mark your calendars because uh, they go fast uh, and speaking of going fast I think series two is gonna go very fast let's go ahead and take a look at the finalists these I think look even better than series one so let's go ahead and take a look at the first one here this is the logging railway by uh, ties 25 uh, we'll scroll down here and take a look at the details here of this thing uh, so 2706 pieces uh, that's going to be a lot of pieces in the bridge there's a lot of detail in that bridge my goodness it looks good so first glance i think it looks great i mean it's a train i mean we love trains do we not though i will say looking at the uh, the train track on there it's not train track it's it looks like it's um if i'm not mistaken it looks like one by three or one by four dark gray plates are just kind of built sideways on that um, so it's definitely more narrow it looks like it's only four studs wide and uh, at the tresses that's uh six studs uh wide is what it looks like there but i, I think the bridge looks fantastic uh let's take a look at all the pictures of this thing here as well there's another shot of it uh pretty good looking uh bridge and train uh, here's a shot at the uh, engine, uh, Toto. Okay, interesting. wonder if that's got some significance to ties 25. All right, here is the uh, flat cart with looks like uh, some sort of generator or engine on it. Heavy duty stuff, right? Ooh, yeah, this is a logging train, so lots of logs there. And I would love that just to get some more trains placed in my city, honestly, but that looks awesome. Very robust. And the caboose. And what does that say on it? Uh, planter and children logging company interesting okay all right and we get three minifigures fancy chainsaw and there's the engineer in the steam engine small engine but uh effective nonetheless and uh, man that has got that's a lot of pieces in that that is a lot of repetition in this build i would say but in the end i think that looks pretty darn cool and this is something that honestly i would like to have in my collection oh i'm sorry this is it's a power functions motor that's what it is they've disguised it to be uh, at least i'm pretty sure that's a, a power function motor. i got the wire going through here um right it's correct if i'm wrong but that looks like it's a battery pack for a nine volt uh, motor or a nine volt battery uh, it's a power and motor that goes in there. That's really cool. So if that's the case, um, then yeah, that's definitely a motor. Okay, <laughs> I'm just seeing this now for the first time along with you guys. So that's really, I got, I got so excited about this uh, that um, I just, I'm like, I came right up here. I wanted to share my screen and check, take a look at this thing. So that is really cool is that it's motorized uh, because now I'm confused because how is it motorized when it's just on a bridge like that when it can't go anywhere? I guess that's an option if you want to put it uh, I mean, it, I guess it would be compatible in, in, on your real train track. So there you go. It's kind of cool. All right, is that it? Uh, yeah, that's all the pictures. So cool. So there is the first one of the Logging Railway. Pretty good looking train. Uh, next one, next finalist is the Ocean House by Hanwas. Let's take a look at this guy. Uh, details, uh, 2,157 pieces. So these are so far pretty big sets uh, so far. Uh, this one looks like it's a nice ocean house. Um, is it set in modern times? I'm not really sure that it is. Uh, let's take a look at this thing. It's built on these stilts. I'm sure there's probably a better word for those. And this roof is interesting here as well. I'm wondering how that all comes together or if it even comes off. Is it modular? Uh, so we've got a hand cart. We've got a boat that comes with it, a fishing boat, a lot of birds, seagulls. Um, I like the, the nests of these birds around. That's pretty cool. I don't really care for the seagulls though, though, because they're so big and bulky, like the rubbery. Um, but I do like these smaller birds though, so um, I'm glad to see those in there. But let's see here. Uh, okay, we got a baby with the mommy holding it very uh, precariously there. Uh, no interior shot quite yet. Um, let's see, I'm trying to look around here at anything else that looks interesting about it. Uh, it definitely looks like it's set in more of a uh, 
historic times. But I'm not able to pinpoint it because I'm terrible at that. I'm not a historian at all. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's open back. It's not modular. I was thinking that we maybe remove the roof. Um, but it's just one big room in there, it looks like. A uh, big living space. There's an ore on the, uh, the roof there. Okay, yep. See that what I mean? It's a big bird. It's like bigger than a Lego person. All right, welcome home, honey. Oh, hey, he's got like, oh, this is like colonial times. I'm looking at this guy at the satchel and his clothing. Uh, so that might be the case here. Uh, you guys can tell me, you more historian people out there. Really cool. We got a treasure map there as well. Uh, very nice. I think it's the last picture of it, though. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that would be kind of something that I could probably fit in my city. Uh, but yeah, so there's go. The, the ocean house. All right, next up we have is the mushroom house by Jonas Cram. Uh, this is definitely the more affordable <laughs> of the five. It looks like, um, so it, it's definitely small. It's a mushroom. So it's like, it's like Smurfs. It, you know, it looks like the Hobbits meets the Smurfs is what this looks like to me. I'm looking at the torsos here and they're like the forestman torsos, uh, but smaller, right? They're, they're tiny people. Uh, so let's take a look at this thing, the details. Okay, so it's open back as well. Uh, very cozy living space inside here. Looks like they sleep on a bed of leaves there. And we have a very big snail, even though it's a normal snail, but it's a big snail for them uh, running around. Looks like they collect berries and things like that. It's like a cherries there on the back and a big flower up top for shade. <laughs> very clever. All right, three minifigures. I think it's all I saw though, right? Look at those big acorns, that's cool. All right. Um, yeah, three minifigs. Look, at, is that a water pump over there? Yeah, I think that's what that is. Oh, there's a good shot of the interior space there and the upper level as well so room for one person to sleep up there at the top it looks like we can remove the roof as well so that's nice uh so yeah i mean there you go you, you have kind of, it's the smurfs but it's not right so they're living in a, in a mushroom there uh let's see do we see the details on this wing okay here we go 943 pieces so uh definitely the more affordable and i would say this is a 50 dollars set but i'm thinking they're going to probably want 80 80 us dollars at least for this thing is my guess so let's go back here so those are the first three the fourth one oh my goodness you guys ah <sighs> brick cross train station um, by Brickster. And I want to say I've seen Brickster's work before. This looks beautiful. I think I am the most excited about this because I think this would look fantastic um, as a facade for my train station. So let's take a look at, the, look at this thing here. Uh, it looks like it is on, uh, built on a 48 by 32 base plate. Uh, so a base plate and a half base plate, basically. A lot going on here. Let's look at the details of this thing really quick. Uh, 3,034 pieces. So yeah, that over if it's north of 3,000 pieces, we can expect it to be at least $300. Uh, let's look at the pictures here. So brick cross uh, train station. Um, oh, okay. So this thing has an open roof. We plop off and the side opens up like a big door. That's kind of cool. And then we can remove the uh, upper level here of that. Uh, I, don't, I didn't see that. It was a donut shop or probably some sort of cafe there on the side. Let's look at some more pictures. Here's a good shot of the interior. Man, this looks beautiful fantastic details you guys oh man is that a piano or organ or something like that wow it's interesting okay so it's like some sort of street performer but he's on the inside because he's got this collection cup right <laughs> that's interesting um we got this guy sweating profusely uh running maybe running late for his train <laughs> oh man yeah this looks good okay so there's the coffee shop there on the side wait is that a waffle okay maybe it's maybe it's a restaurant then uh Maybe I'm totally missing the. Maybe I'm missing the train here. <laughs> I was gonna say missing the boat, but it's a train station. All right, so here's a good look at the uh, the restaurant here. I'm not gonna call it a restaurant. There's a oh, um, something of something uh, dark dark ages. Okay, I need to look at that from the front there. I, I totally missed that. Uh, so we got a street performer here at the front with a very loud speaker and a microphone. Um, yeah, they're serving waffles. Look at that. That is interesting. I do like the side of this building. I like that. That is really cool looking. Great design. Ooh, yeah. Man, that looks cozy, doesn't it? Yeah, sure enough, they're serving waffles. And, oh, yeah, hold on. Let me go back there. The the, top, the upper section there. Uh, okay, so that's like a, a place for them to sit down and eat. Um, gosh, End of Dark Ages. Is that what it is? End of Dark Ages, I think is what that says. All right. Maybe I'm wrong. I need to find, I need to look at that a little bit better. Oh, it's a whole... Okay, this is the other shed we're looking at now. So we've got a kitchen here uh, and a little cafe below it. Uh, so is this where they make the 
the, the waffles, uh, I guess. I don't know, I'm probably just butchering this, you guys. Okay, so here's a nice little shop that we can go buy some snacks or drinks in before we get on our train. I like that, that looks really good. Good tile work. Um, very good use of the space. Is this, uh, it looks like this is something that moves up and down, like it, it's a hinge element, right? Huh, I wonder what that's all about. Hmm, okay. All right, here's the back of it. And you know what? This is the, one of those rare moments where the back of the set looks just as good as the front. Oh, man. Uh, so, oh, wait, hold on a second. Um, so this is actually going to be a little bit bigger than 32 studs. So if that's the 32 studs that ends right there and this is hooked on, it is deeper than 32 studs. So I'm going to say it's going to add on at least uh, five or let's see, four, five, six, seven studs more. So I'd say 39 studs. That's my guess. Deep with the... Uh, the train track there on the back. This looks, this looks good. We've got a bench there. Um, 1958, I wonder if that has some significance to Brixter. Maybe a year of birth, I don't know. Um, hopefully, I don't know, because that's... Uh, <laughs> 1950, 1950s? That's a while ago. I like this balcony up here. It looks really good. So that's the stairway coming upstairs. Um, they can access that kitchen there on that side, and they can access um, the, uh, the cafe here on the other side there as well. All right, there's a great look at the front. Eight minifigures. Oh, okay, there's there's what I, uh, for that hinge element. Okay, it's a news brick, and it's holding up newspapers there. Oh, there we go, end of dark ages. Okay, there you have it. I was, I was right. I was trying to figure out what that said. This is awesome. I love it. I am so excited for this thing, you guys. This looks really good. Um, this is going to go fast. It's going to be hard to actually get a hold of one of these ones because they limit you to two, and uh, 20,000 is the limit. Uh, they're not making more than 20,000. Uh, so that is, gosh, that looks great. All right, last but not least is Amis Isle by Jazz Lacruz. Lacraz, sorry, Jazz Lacraz. There we go, yep. Let's take a look at the details on this one. 2,773 pieces on this thing. And this kind of has a um, an old... Uh, 90s, 80s castle theme, not castle, pirate theme vibe to it. Uh, almost looks like it's, um, oh, it does remind me a lot of those, a lot of those older uh, uh, pirate bases. Like they're always like shipwrecks, right? Uh, I, I don't know if this is supposed to be a shipwreck or not. I see elements of a shipwreck here. Uh, we got a cannon up there. We got this lookout, the crow's nest up there. We've got, oh, what is that? A, a skeleton of some sort of sea monster there on the side. Interesting. Let's take a look at some pictures of this thing. Reconfigurable, so it's modular. You know what? It's it's kind of like Pirates of Barracuda Bay, uh, but it doesn't have the uh, the pirate ship that you can configure. But it's kind of cool that it has that. I mean, we get a little rowboat. That's always nice to see. <laughs> a cool cage, man. I love it. That is cool. And it looks like it's got some decent interior space there as well. Some inside caves. Really cool. Looks like we can get around the island pretty cool, pretty well, with all the, the bridges and paths that they've created throughout. They look like pirates to me, so I'm guessing these, these are just shipwrecked pirates. Oh, okay, there we go. There you have it, folks. Um, yeah, there is a decent uh, interior space. They're dual level as well. I like it. So this looks like it's the captain's quarters. Um, it does have a cave uh, element to it. they got a gear here, a couple gears. It looks like this might roll up that bridge there at the bottom. And this rolls something else. I'm wondering what that gear does. Ah, so I like, I like those little hidden gems there. All right, so areas to discover inside. Of course, ooh, there's a lot of gold in there. And they have this bust, a gold bust right there as well. We've got a mouse, some uh, place for all the rum. <laughs> Why is the rum gone? <laughs> Oh, there's the drawbridge. All right. Oh, okay. It, it lifts. That's what that gear is. Okay. It lifts up the, the main entrance there for the skeleton or the skull face there made out of uh, gray elements. Really cool. I like, I like this. You know, discover secrets. Oh, yeah. Awesome. This is great. I like this. is very creative. I'm so happy this is going to be one. Uh, so modular design, different elements and places you can connect to. This is really cool. So th this is a great job. I think this is also going to disappear pretty quick. Oh, hey, they give us a map of how to access everything on the island. So from here on the docks, all the way to the top to the main lookout. Very, very nice. There you have it, folks. Wow. Okay, so let's take a look at these things on where they are in the process. So this is a very long, drawn-out process. It is not quick where we just see the final results on the shelves. Uh, so just the, on the 23rd of August, the five designs are announced. What is next? Refining the, uh, the finalist designs last from September until May. <laughs> May of next year. 
So working with model governance and building instruction teams and making any final necessary adjustments before locking the final designs for pre-production. And then finally, when they get that all done, we go into oh, the so stressful crowdfunding. I say stressful because if you want one of these, you got to act fast. You got to be like right there refreshing your, uh, your browser. So June of 2024 is when crowdfunding begins. Bricklink members may pre-order their favorite sets with a limit of two of each per household. All sets that receive over 3,000 pre-orders will be produced. I don't think they're gonna have any problem uh, achieving 3,000 pre-orders. Up to 20,000 of each set will be manufactured during a limited one-time production run. So you only got one shot. Do not miss your chance to buy. Sorry, started wrapping there. 20,000 sounds like a lot, but it's really not. That will disappear, especially those more popular items will disappear within the hour. Trust me, they will. Um, so if any of these interest you, uh, make sure to get it when crowdfunding begins. Otherwise, you'll be left in the cold. And I hate to say it, unfortunately, you will be left paying a hefty premium on BrickLink because people, unfortunately, will try to buy these just to flip them and turn a profit, which is unfortunate, um, but is kind of the reality of the situation. Uh, so yeah, series two, there it is, guys. And series three right now is rolling uh, as far as uh, getting submissions uh, for your own design. So if you want to, if you have a cool design and you want to submit it uh, for people to vote on, uh, you can definitely do that between now. You got 25 more days to make it in series three. Uh, but very happy to see this happening. I mean, this is totally different from Lego Ideas. Uh, I do like that there's a, a fan influence, a fan vote in here. The only thing I don't like is that it is so darn limited. And just an FYI, um, even if you do get one for pre-order, it is a very, very long wait time until you see your set. It's going to be at least eight or nine months before you get it in the mail. So this is not a program for patient people. It's what actually happens is people will order them and then they'll forget all about it and then they'll get it in the mail. <laughs> like, what, what, what the heck is this? I don't order any Lego set. Oh, this thing from like a year ago. Yeah, now I remember. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, this is a new thing. Lego is doing it. So uh, very happy to see this thing uh, alive and well uh, and a very popular program. So like I said, guys, keep uh, mark your calendars um, for when is that? Um, did I say June uh, of next year? Is that when I saw the crowdfunding? Begin? Yeah, June of 2024. Huh. Like you're going to remember that from this video, right? Anyway, guys, yeah, let me know uh, of those five designs, which ones get you excited the most? Which one do you want the most? Do you want all five or not any of them? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, you guys, Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.